بسم الله بسم الله الحمد لله الذي جعل الحمد لله الذي جعل امر بالمعروف ونهي عن المنكر القطب الاعظم في الدين الاسلام والصلاه والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد الامين اما بعد To show you the importance of today's talk, let me just show you this chart. This is the chart that I am not going to go over today, but I'm just going to show you this is the live chart of the U.S. national debt. And you will be able to see that the U.S., what its national debt is looking like. Let me also show you the world national debt of the top countries in the world. Now, why am I talking about this? As you know, interest is haram. But I want to talk about an aspect of interest today that has not been talked about before in the Muslim platform. And that is the first executive order. If you understand what I'm saying, this would be a way for all the Muslim countries to get ahead. What I'm about to say. It would be a way for Western countries, even the United States of America, if they did this thing the Prophet said, they would get ahead. They would be able to give relief to their people and be able to survive the inevitable. The inevitable that they've, the, the, the inevitable dead end that they're going to come to. So, let me share with you what the Prophet did وسلم, and the significance of that. Look, the Prophet conquers Arabia. He and 10,000 of his companions march into Mecca. The Prophet وسلم, is the crownless king of Arabia. And the words of Allah came true. When the victory and the help of Allah comes, you would see the people enter into the deen of Allah in crowds. And so the Prophet is entered into Mecca with his head in complete submission to Allah and his head is bowing down to Allah and his head is touching the neck of the camel. And so he is in complete gratitude for what Allah has allowed with basically hardly any bloodshed. And he gives, after this event, he gives a khutbah, known as khutbatul wida, the khutbah of farewell. And he says in the beginning of this khutbah, to emphasize the importance of that day and what he will say that day, he says, Ayyomikum haza, which day is this? Which country is this? And they said, Allah and His Messenger know. They know best what is the answer to this question. He said, look, this is the day of Hajj. And this is the day of Friday. And this is the place of Mecca. And today, you get your true independence. The independence that إِنَّمَا الْأَمْوَالُكُمْ وَعَرَادُكُمْ وَدَمَاءُكُمْ حَرَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Your wealth and your lives and your honor is sacred today. I make, I declare it sacred. And in talking about this, what is the first, 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 first executive order the Prophet gives? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first executive order of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he conquers Arabia as the crownless king the first executive order is the release of all debts with riba And so let us read the text 
to get a better understanding. I'm not talking about having an economy not based upon interest yet. I am talking about when you have power and you want to start a new page. When you have power, listen to me, when you have power and you want to start a new page, then you must do what the Prophet did. And alongside the Prophet, many great leaders did. You must eradicate and cancel all debts that were based upon injustice. Because who is the debt of the world owed to? The debt of schools, the mortgage debts, the car debts, the banking debts, the, the refinancing, all the debts, who are they owed to? They're owed to the 1% from the 99%. The people owe their debts for their cars and their mortgages and their houses and their God knows what to the 1%. And some powerful leader has to come who has to say all that money that was going to go to the elite has to be canceled. Germany did this after World War II. Why do you think Germany built back so fast? Germany declared forgiveness of debt. You know why? Because at that time, the elite were the Nazis. And so they said, well, you know, let's not make them rich. Let's cancel the debt. And that allowed Germany to rise again. By canceling the debt, a co an economy based upon loans upon loans, and you cannot compete the acceleration and the growth of an economy compared to compound interest. The point is not to pay back the interest. Listen to me, Muslim countries, the point is not for them that you pay back the interest. They know that's not going to happen. They know the compound interest will increase more than the economy can increase. But what they want is perpetual enslavement and domination. And that can be ensured with a compound interest. But let me not go there. I'm talking about a little bit slightly different subject, which is that once you come in power, or those that are in power, that if they want to offer relief to their subjects, to their people, then that leader, if he has the audacity, if he has the courage, if he has the courage to stand up against the elite, the way Abu Bakr radiallahu anh said, that the strong are weak in my eyesight and the weak are strong in my eyesight until I deliver the rights to the weak from the strong. That was the first khutbah Abu Bakr gave. So he understood the dynamics of international, international leadership and power and he understood that what can the elite do to the weak. And so always in the Abrahamic faiths, the idea of debt is been considered something very negative. It is a sin not to pay back debt unless it has been done in a way to be unjust to the person. And it is a sin to give a debt to a person in a way that you know he cannot pay back because that is manipulation and control. And the word debt in Arabic is deen. Deen is religion. And religion is what you owe other people, what you owe Allah, what you owe your parents, what you owe each other. And the one you owe debt to controls you. So Allah is Maliki Yawmiddin, master and the king of the day of deen, the day of judgment, because the one who has the power of judgment over you is like the one 
who you owe and he has power over you. So these are some words, deen, which is the deen of Islam, the whole deen. Deen is about give and take and about judgments. And deen, which is from the same root word, is about being in debt. And there's a hadith of the Prophet, a dua he used to do, that he used to ask refuge from, from deen, uh, that from the, from the oppression of the man, of men. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-huzni wa a'udhu bika min al-kasni wal-jubni wa a'udhu bika min al-ghalabat al-dayni wa qahr al-rijal These people, the elites, they are qahr al-rijal They are qahr, they're forceful, tyrannical men, people that say you have to owe us money And so all Mr. Biden would have to do if he is a man of courage, is to say that the debt is cancelled. No school debt loans, no mortgage debt loans, no loans. We don't need to owe the elite more money than they've already been making. That's it. All it is, it's a declaration. And you may think that this, what I'm saying, is crazy. But it is not crazy. It has been done time and again in history. And if you don't cancel the debt, it's like, it's like, you live in a linear world where things are just going in one direction, but Muslims live in a cyclical world where things have to be reset. And sometimes in history, the, can the cancellation of debt has to happen. And so we find our Prophet ﷺ saying in the text of the last sermon, all praise is Allah's. We praise Him. We seek His help ask his forgiveness, and rep repent unto him. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves <coughs> and from our bad actions. Whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomever he leads astray has no one to guide him. I testify, there is no divine authority or power but Allah alone, without any partner or equal. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the, me is the slave and the messenger of Allah. I enjoin you, O servants of Allah, to be God-fearing towards Allah. I urge you to obey Him, and I begin with that which is best. To commence, O people, hear me well. I explain to you, for I do not know I may well not meet you again in this place where I now stand after this year. Uh, after this year. O people, your lives, your property, until the very day you meet your Lord, are invulnerable, meaning they're sacred, to each other as the invulnerability of this day you are now in, this month you are now in, have I given the message? And everyone said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, you have conveyed the message. O Allah, be my witness. So let whoever has been given something for safekeeping give it back to him who gave it to him. And then the Prophet said, وسلم, His first major executive order. Okay, truly usury interest of the era of ignorance, meaning before I was sitting in this place, standing in this place, before I was the crownless king of this place, where I have made people's honor and their blood and their properties and their lives sacred. Truly, the usury of the era of ignorance has been laid aside forever. And the first usury I begin with, which is due to my father's brother Ibn Abbas, Abdul Muttalib, meaning he started with his own family, the Prophet said, because he was, the Quraysh were amongst the elite. So he, he said, no more, that's it. You're not going to get any interest, that's it. And then the Prophet continues from there. So he first says, so let whoever has been given something for safekeeping, give it back. And number two, that the first executive order. So the first executive, meaning this was, the, this is individual. Give something back, that's individual. Those of you who have to give something back, give it back. But this was the law of the land. No more interest, all meaning, what does that mean? Let me, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. That meant that anyone who owed anything based upon interest, now he doesn't own it, except for maybe the principal. But that's it. All cancel debt cancellation across the entire nation. Debt 
cancellation across the entire nation. Try to understand what it means to be in debt. It's one of the worst things. The Quran calls the word debt firriqab, when your necks are tied up. It is also the same word the Quran uses for being enslaved. Because when you're enslaved, your necks are tied up. Wa firriqab, and those whose necks are tied up. And those who are in debt, their necks are tied up. The average American household debt is $8,000. Okay, you're so instead, so like, for example, when in the 2008 crisis that happened that in which Obama, Obama, uh, Hussein, President Obama helped, uh, you know, uh, the banks, okay, get their money and all their insurances and everything instead of telling them he could have, if he was a strong character, he could have said, look, you guys are the ones that messed up. You're the ones who gave the wrong uh uh, uh, funds, and you're the ones who gave the people that didn't deserve the houses, and you knew that they couldn't keep their jobs and make the payments, and so I'm going to cancel all the debt and let them keep the houses. But he didn't do that. He wanted to give the money to the elites. And so he did. And so, let's look at Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam compared to the elites of the world. Prophet Muhammad is that courageous leader who stood up and cancelled all debts. Cancelled debts across the nation. Let me show you what that will mean. So for example, the American public, American public, the 99% owes the 1% how much? $15 trillion. The blue line you see is the mortgage for the houses. Most people have mortgages for 30 years it takes 30 years to pay off a house and that's a lot of percentage i don't know what can even end up doing that then you have the orange line home equity line of credit this is for people who go to their bank and say look i've paid for my house x amount but i need to take out a portion of that to fix the roof or fix the house the green is the auto loan the yellow is the credit cards when they're maxed out, and by the way, now credit cards are maxed out. The red is the student loans, and then there are other loans, agricultural loans, and so on and so forth. $15 trillion. The 99% owe the 1% $15 trillion. Now, instead of the 99% of the people, if they were able to use that money that they are going to give to the 1%, the $15 trillion for their own selves, for their own economy, for their own building, for their own investment, wherever they want to do it, for their own bills. That would be debt cancellation. If some strong leader in the Muslim world, in the Muslim countries, or in the West, somebody like, 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 never going to happen, like, but somebody like in the some president who has courage to stand up against the elite. And you know, in the olden days, you know why they would cancel the debt? As I will show you, you know, one of the amazing things about debt cancellation is that debt cancellation does not allow the oligarchy to become so powerful that the government can't do anything. Many people of the olden days, many kings, used to abolish the debt so that the rich would not become too rich. If you're becoming too rich, it's better to abolish the debt so you don't become too rich. What has happened in America through capitalism is the capital corporations are more powerful than the government and the government cannot speak for the people. Whereas the king... The king, he was true to his people and he would cancel the debt of the elite to the people because it was a threat to the king too. If the oligarchy became so rich, if Bill Gates becomes so rich, if uh, all these other Elon Musk and all these people became so rich, then every politician would be in their pocket. And the bankers, if they buy these people out, then... There is no relief 
There's no reset. There's no cyclical system to make things right for the poor. And that is what we find ourselves in. So let me share with you <clears throat> a few more things. And about the same khutbah of the Prophet Ibn Majah, radiyallahu anh, he records, أَلَا إِنَّ كُلِّ رِبًا مِنْ رِبًا جَاهِلِيَّ مَوْضُوءٌ لَكُمْ مَوْضُوءٌ Indeed, all of the riba of the days of Jahiliya has been thrown down. لَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ For you is the principle of your money. And then the Prophet, like a hero, like a man of justice, says, لَا, لا تُظْلَمُونَ وَلَا لا تظلمون ولا تظلمون. Don't do wrong and what? Do not do do not wrong others and you will not be wronged. Because what happened in the Roman Empire, the debt got so big of the elite that the slaves did a revolt and killed the very people that they owed money to and owed their debt to. And this is why many of the Nations, they used to have, uh, some of them had a jubilee where they would forgive the debt. Sometimes when there would be a new king, he would come with the idea of, okay, now let's reset everything. Let's forgive, let's forgive the debt. Some king died. Somebody would say, okay, the next king would say, because my dad died, I'm, I'm forgiving the debt. We're starting new. Because otherwise the poor get poorer and poorer and the rich get richer. And so the, one of the aspects of riba that has not been talked about is this aspect that in order not to allow the rich to get rich, the Amir and the Khalifa of the nation and the first executive order of the Prophet to the nation was no more riba, only just the principle, that's it. Just some examples of this in history, okay? Debt forgiveness or cancellation was found in ancient Athens, where in the 6th century BC, the lawmaker Solon instituted a set of laws called, I don't know how to say this word, which canceled all debts and retroactively canceled previous debts that had caused slavery and serfdom, freeing debt slaves and debt serfs. Okay, let's continue. In this uh, Boston Review about the long history of debt cancellation, I just want to read to you a par portion of this, okay, that it was always considered neither a borrower nor be lender be. Don't be the borrower, don't take debt, and don't be the lender of debt. Both are disliked. The one who eats riba and gives riba. Usury always existed in the fringes of Christian society. And then he says, most famously, the dominion of the Jews who... who Outsider status would be strategically deployed to allow both violence and a kind of expertise lending that helped capital circulate, etc., etc. Okay, and so this is talking about the history of how Christianity allowed debt, but it was known in ancient societies that debt is not good, and debt means the richer are getting richer. Okay, so when you are saying America has a debt of 30 trillion, who does America owe 30 trillion dollars to? Who does China owe its money to? If Muslim countries are smart, they would be able to do this. And when we have the Khilafah, just like the Prophet, when he became the crownless king and he abolished and re did a reset, the German economic miracle, thanks to debt relief, highly indebted, without access to capital, viewed suspiciously by creditors. That was Germany in 1953. Half the country's debts were cancelled 60 years ago this week. The foundation of the economic miracle. Obviously, if you owe somebody $15 trillion and instead of paying the rich people, you use that for something good, Everything can turn around. The long tradition of debt cancellation in Mesopotamia and Egypt from 3000 to 1000 BC. Okay? Even these people, ancient people, the modern people don't know how to solve the problem. 
of the economy. Okay, I'll tell you how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One of the things he would definitely do. One of the first things he would definitely do. Muslim, non-Muslim, he'd say, "Okay, no more interest. No more interest in the land. All your school loans cancelled. All your mortgages cancelled. All your car loans cancelled. All your whatever credit card payments cancelled." Okay, this is what Prophet Muhammad would do sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Show me a man who has the courage to stand up to the elite like that. Here's another article about debt cancellation in the land of Canaan in the first millennium. Okay, so this is the, 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 this is the Muslims of that time. This is what they used to do. They used to cancel the debt. And so, the Hammurabi and the forgiveness of debt. Okay. Debt Jubilees, an ancient solution for a modern problem. Okay, rather I would say a prophetic solution to this problem that's modern or ancient in many most prominent ancient civilizations, including the Babylonians, meaning the Babylonian that Cyrus had, and Egypt, and Sparta, and China, and others. Excessive household debt was a huge reoccurring problem. Debt that was both a necessary and pervasive element of these economies, did many of the same things that it does now. It facilitated payment for labor, allowed for acquisition of supplies, bridged the time between planting and harvest, sowing and then reaping for profit. Meaning this is what it allowed it to do. Okay. But for this reason, among others, kings had devised debt forgiveness or amnesty as a solution. Ancient Israelites, meaning the Muslims, took debt relief and as an important step further, they removed it from the realm of king's whims and encoded it in, into their sharia, okay, making it reoccur the year of seven circles of seven years. So that's how it was in their sharia. We don't have that. Uh, but what we do have is ayat about no interest. And to make things easy, necessarily easy for the one who can't pay. And there are many other laws regarding this in Sharia. But my point is, if somebody has the power to stick out his neck against the elite, only that person can cancel the loans. Because the loans have to go to the 1%. And so, until... If America is not willing to stand up to its own elite, if American politicians are not and Muslim politicians are not and Muslim leaders in Muslim countries are not willing to stand up to the elite that they, that to whom they owe interest and they are not willing to stand up and say, look guys, we're starting, we're starting, we're setting, we're doing a reset. While the whole world, its interest rates and its uh, compound interest is going up. Look at this. While the whole world, its debt is going up. And this is payment that is due to who? This is payment. This national debt. Look at national debt. This national debt is due to the globalists. Look at the national debt of China. China to the globalists, national debt of Japan, to who? To the globalists, the national debt of Germany, to who? To the bankers, to the globalists, and UK, and India, and so on and so forth. So who has the audacity to stand up and say, oh, all these loans, forget them. We are wiping the slate clean. Does any Muslim have the ability to stand up in his nation and say, okay, Hold on, all, you oligarchy, you 1%, hold on. We're going to cancel the loans due to you so that the nation can have a relief. This is what Prophet Muhammad Wasallam did. This is what he taught. He is the man who can solve every problem over a cup of tea, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And no one will listen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but this is the solution for America with all its debts. All it has to do is to have the courage to stand up to the elite 
and to do what the great kings of the past did, to do what our Prophet did, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, cancel the debt, declare a cancellation of debt, restart the board again, so that the people can use the money instead of paying off more and more and more of insurmountable, impossible levels of debt. Instead of doing that, instead of paying off the school debt that has now made the idea of going to school kind of like silly almost. But instead of paying off debts of the past, a person can use that money to move forward and the nation that does that, that has the ability to do that, can move forward. Debt cancellation is a very big good deed if any Muslim ruler is willing to do it. But I suspect no Muslim ruler is going to do it and I certainly don't suspect that any American president or any European leader is going to take this step of debt cancellation. So <coughs> here we are in this situation that is kind of pathetic because look at this. You cannot have debt rising like this. Look at the US. Okay. The debt is more than the income. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen when the debt is more than the income? So the debt is more than the income and that means what? That's the nation and then the people have their own debts. Every family has their own debts. And uh, the debt of the family, you know, you can see here in this chart that I showed you, right? At least somebody should have the courage to say, okay, this internal debt of $15 trillion that's going to go to the elite, let's get rid of that. But no one has the courage to do what Prophet Muhammad did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one has the courage to do what the Prophet did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one side of riba is the, 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 the giving the loans to companies and people, you know, and then you give them an X amount and then they pay you back an X amount, X plus whatever interest rate. Actually, it starts with interest rate, then plus X. So they pay you back the interest and then the principal. Okay, that's one aspect. That's one side of the interest and in riba. The other side of riba is that wiping the slate clean. Wiping the slate clean. Wiping the slate clean when you come as a leader. When you come as a leader, you have the ability to say to the, if you are a strong leader, you have the ability to say to the leaders, the globalists, the elite, the 1%, not this time, we're starting over. We're going to give relief to the people of the country or to the people of the nation or the people of this area. We're not going to deal with your debt. We're going to cancel it. That is what a true leader would do. So, yes, if I got voted president in the United States of America, I would cancel all debt. But, of course, we know that's not going to happen. But I make that's what my intention is that I would do because I want the reward of removing this injustice with my intention. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all understand the preciousness of our Islam, the preciousness of our deen, the beauty of our Islam, the beautiful teachings of Islam, the wonderful teachings of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so I want to end with this particular verse of the Qur'an. <coughs> where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about riba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares this unjust system to be haram. 
So now let me start here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ riba." One day I'm going to talk about this particular, this particular part of the ayah in great detail. Because it, what does it mean to eat riba? And what about the one who gives? And what about the one who takes? And I'll explain this one day, the rulings for that. الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ riba, Those who eat interest. لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِينَ يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسْ they do not stand. Okay. Illa kama yakumu ladi yatahabbatuhu shaytanu min al mas. Except as the one who's driven and beaten up by shaytan by his touch. Thalika this is bika annahum qalu. They say innama al bayu mithlu riba. That riba is just like commerce, trade. Instead of trading an ab and a tool, for example, you're trading money. But Allah says, وَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ Allah has made bay'a halal. وَحَرَّمَ riba. And one day, I'm going to talk in detail about this too, but not today. But Allah has made riba haram. فَمَنْ جَاءُهُ مَعْوِذَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ فَانْتَهَا So whoever has received this admonition from Allah, let him desist. فَلَهُ مَا salaf. Whatever you've done in the past, that's fine. وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ That affair is with Allah. وَمَنْ عَادَ And whoever goes back to taking interest. فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ They're the people of the hellfire. هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ In it, they will remain. يَمْحَكُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى Now this is what I want you to understand. Allah will destroy riba. So any system based upon riba will eventually collapse. But Allah blesses the charity. And that includes letting people go away from their loans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love any sinful ingrate. Okay. Then Allah says after another ayah, "Ya ladina amanu taku Allah wa daru ma baqiya min al riba in kuntu mu'minin." O you people who believe, "Ittaku Allah, fear Allah, wa daru and leave ma baqiya min al riba of whatever remains of usury, meaning whatever more is owed to you, let it go in kuntu mu'minin." If you are true believers, fa illam tafalu. If you don't do this, فَعْزَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ Then know there is a war of Allah and His Messenger against you. وَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسِ أَمْوَالِكُمْ And if you repent, then you may keep the capital, the original principal amount. وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ And these were the words of the Prophet. Neither wronging nor being wronged. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but some people, they're given a loan, even though they don't, they, you know that they don't have the capacity to pay back. وَإِن كَانَ ذُو عُسْرَةٍ And if he is in hardship, and he's in hardship and you gave him a loan, knowing he's in a hardship. فَنَظِرَةٌ إِلَى مَيْصَرَ So then let there be a deferment until an ease. وَإِن تَصَدَّقُوا And if you remit the charity, if you let it go, give sadaqah. خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It is best for you. This is being said to who? To the riba givers, to the elite. They're being told that fear Allah. And they're being told to let it go. You, this is not a survival matter for you. إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ If you did but know. And then, the last ayah that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Wattaqu yawman turjaoon fihi ila Allah." Wattaqu and fear, yawman that day turjaoon fihi ila Allah. That day where you will be returned to Allah. Thumma tuwafa kullu nafsim ma kasabat, and every soul will be given what it is earned. وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And they will not be wronged. 
And then the next is the longest ayah in the Quran about debt. And then the next three verses are verses that after the ayahs of debt, two ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the three ayahs revealed to the Prophet in Mi'raj. So these, the spirituality and financial transaction have been interconnected with one another. But I can't go into details of that right now. I only wanted to share with you uh, this one uh, last thing that I want to share with you to give you an idea of what's happening with the American debt, the national debt. This is not to talk about. Now, this will show you how the debt has changed from the 1930s. It's about a two minute clip, but I'm going to maybe forward it up from uh, 19. Let's take it to starting it from 19. Uh, well, let's just do the whole thing, inshallah. So now you can see the GDP is higher than the debt. Okay, the GDP is higher than the debt. In 1934, 1935, 1936, 1937, and you can see the debt is basically in control. But you'll see how things have changed in the last few years. Okay. That's 1940s, okay? And the debt became more than the GDP in the 1940s. And then this is, and then, but for the most part, it wasn't that bad. But just watch what happens. Now we're in the 1950s. Nineteen sixties. Now remember what happened nineteen seventy three, right? Because the U.S. didn't want to pay its uh, foreign loans in gold and silver, so they had to take off the gold and silver standard for foreign, especially because of foreign debts. So now, now in nineteen seventy three, now remember what happened. So now. Things are pretty stable in the 1970s and then 1980s. Everything is stable till recent times. Just watch how it just so drastically just changes. Everything just changed. <coughs> so we're entering into the 1990s. And I remember in the 1990s listening to the news and how people were worried that the debt is catching up. But yet, you know, it was uh, also kind of still in control. And they tried really hard in those times. But then after 2008, after the housing crisis, everything really just went downhill from there. So we're in 2005 and then 2006. And as you see, the debt's increasing. And all of a sudden, 2008, look at that. 2009. 2010, see what's been happening, and 2012, 13. Now the debt is more than the revenue that comes in, okay? 16, 17, 18, 19, and look at that. That's the COVID years, pushing everything back, okay? So that's where we are now. So... That's a pretty difficult situation to be in. That's a pretty difficult situation to be in. And the only way out of it is to deal with the interest, the loan, the interest loans. I will end here, inshallah ta'ala, today. I'll say this, astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'al muslimina wal muslimat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Again, if it comes in your heart, please definitely donate i'm trying to get some major projects done um that i think will be beneficial for the ummah inshallah also so to do donate look in the description or in my comment section that will be pinned i'll have the information there inshallah i hope 
that you'll help me out, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. So, okay, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.